Welcome. Chilling with Chill. My brother Joseph Amon. TJ. Indeed. Good to be here. What's going on, brother? It's good, man. It's Monday morning. Start of a new week. Yeah, man. Yeah. Start of a new week. Started yesterday, though, PJ. Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> know. Second day of the week. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Let's get specific. That's all right. The founder good, of man. Out of Ashes Ministries. Yep. Yep. What, what inspired that, man? What is what is Out of Ashes all about? Well, um, I grew up. I grew up basically in church. Um, well, kind of mixed. Um, my mom had me in church every time the doors were open. Um, but my dad was a musician, and uh, so Friday, Saturday nights, we played ballrooms, little dive bars, and little clubs ever since I was pretty much in junior high. But I was always in church. And uh, so started out in a Baptist church, went to a Bible church, um, kind of non-denominational Bible church thing, <clears throat> and then uh, back to a Baptist church, and then uh, moved from where I lived uh, and uh, joined a more kind of spirit-filled or Pentecostal-based uh, non-denominational church. And um, I noticed a pattern through all these, all these churches that people, we would go, and in my own, it started in my own life personally, we would go to church, you know, religiously, Sunday, Sunday night, <laughs> Wednesday, you know, Tuesday, you know, if the, the preacher was vacuuming the carpet, we were there, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And um, I didn't notice a lot of people's lives really better. Right. Um, and so it really led me on a, a search of the scriptures to find out, okay, is once we have, once we're saved, once we're born again, is life really supposed to be better or is that something we just made up right. you know or is it that life still is going to pretty much suck but we deal with it differently like right. what you know what kind of the paradigm we should live in and um i think that a little of both are true but i think we focused on the one where like you, you come to jesus or come to yeshua his hebrew name and you come to him and everything is great which is not really Biblically, if you look at the saints in the Bible, they all had atrocious lives, right. you know, in a lot, in large part. On the other hand, um, something inside of them stayed strong. So I think it's a, a kind of a mix of both both things. And I just, in my personal life, I really struggled with that. So I went on a personal journey to look for where my where my life could be solid and where I could solidify. And you know, Psalm one is my kind of my life chapter I it's corny to say that but it's 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 the the right. scripture that I, I keep going back to over and over and it talks about this tree that's planted mm -hmm. and uh that just speaks so much to me because in me my life I've been so blown about all all the time you know right. somebody somebody says something about me and it makes me upset and it completely crashes my reality or if somebody brags on me you know it makes me feel good then i feel like i'm the king of the world you know right, right. it's like this every day moments in in every day this swing this pendulum swing i just got tired of living like that i mean i was my life was in ashes i mean it'd been burnt to the ground you know and and a lot of it by choices that i made but but i didn't have i wasn't fulfilled i mean for a, a while there i just i was ready to just check out you know i was just done not not like check out of a job or, or whatever but like just get out i was done 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 so I really started to, to see, search the scriptures and see where I was flawed and maybe the way I was thinking about what was life supposed to be about and, and all of that. And, um, and, and God really did something with me during that time. And uh, it wasn't a sermon I heard or a teaching I heard or a devotional I read or an inspirational something. It wasn't any of that. It was really... It was really just the hand of God. I, I can't explain it any other way. Um, that began to make certain scriptures that I'd read a hundred times before just really clear, and it started to put pieces of the Bible together. Whereas I'd always viewed the Bible as the the Old Testament was one part, the New Testament was a different part, and they were in contradiction to each other. They fought against each other. It became this thing where the the Old Testament, or in Hebrew, the Tanakh and the New Testament were one story. And I began to see the thread of God's love and mercy and grace and His plan all the way from Genesis 1 all the way through to the end of Revelation. And 
and it's one story. It's the same story all the way through. And um, you know, I, I'm a worship leader by by gifting, I guess, if you want to call it. So I mean, that's how I connect with God really is through worship. And I mean, I've been in some worship services and led some worship services that just, I mean, just the presence of God is so thick you can't hardly, you know, stand up. And I started to think, you know, all those experiences I had, none of those really strengthened my faith and my passion for God. They were great in that moment, you know, right, and maybe right. the residue, like we used to say, for, you know, a few days, you know, was, right. was really good. Um, but inevitably, I found myself in the same old ruts, and I never could get traction. I think that's the word I'm looking for. I never could get traction and move ahead with God. And um, not until I started seeing the word, his word, his story for what it was that I really start to have a passion. So that's that's a long, long answer. But out of ashes, um, my wife uh, had this name pop in her head one one night several years ago, but years and years ago. Shout out to Mama Bill. And, uh, yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, she said, I, you know, I have this name that keeps coming to my head, Out of Ashes. And I, and I thought maybe it would be a song I would write or a skit we would do. Right. Skits were real big back then. Um, and whenever I came to the place where um, I was ready to, to change my religious environment, my church environment, um, that I thought this is what it was for all those years ago, this name, Out of Ashes. And really what our, our hope is and our goal is, um, is to teach the scripture and, and have uh, teach people an outlook on the scripture um, where it's not just a sensational you know type of thing where um, you know well just have faith you know and you can make it or it's not hey come get a you know a shot of the spirit on one day a week or two days a week and you'll be fine to make it through it's it's really a understanding the word and and having it where it becomes your substance and you know the, the words of uh, Yeshua are reminded he says you know I have bread that you don't know of I have you know, the disciples are going, aren't you hungry? What you eat? He says, I have bread you don't know of. And that's really where it's come to with us is that the, the word of God, the substance of what who he is, has really become our our substance. It's become who we are. And and I've I've noticed that in my life and, and you know, people around us that are uh, that are, are studying like we are, it's there's a maturity and a health and a consistency and a healing that's coming to people that I haven't seen in other places. So that's what Out of Ashes Ministry is all about. We don't have, um, we're not a church in the traditional sense. Um, we're not a synagogue, even though we teach on the, the biblical feasts and, and uh, dietary and all that kind of stuff. Um, we really are just a, a group of people who study the word together. And uh, and I happen to be the leader for whatever that's worth. Um, and uh, and that's really what it's about. Uh, we, we come together on the Sabbath, on the seventh day Sabbath. And um, we eat together, we study the Word together, and, um, and we're a community. And it's a safe place where, um, you know, everybody in some way or another is looking for truth. Uh, I mean, you know, religious people, non-religious people, different, every race, every color, every whatever, is looking for truth. And I believe that there is only one truth. Everybody's just in a different place of finding where that is. Right. And, uh, and we're all, and so what we're trying to do is, is just be a, a family, a mishpaka, where it's safe that you can you cannot understand what we're talking about, or you cannot understand why we believe what we believe, but you know this is a place where that's okay, and you can ask questions. Um, one of the things you know, growing up in church, is that you never ask questions. You know, you never question stuff. You never question doctrine, or well, why does this verse say this? But this, you know, you didn't ask those kind of questions, um, or why do we do this? But the Bible doesn't have anything to do with that inside. And this is a place where we, we could ask those questions. It doesn't mean we're going to have the answer, right. but at least the freedom to explore. You know, we God is not so feeble and so, um, you know, God doesn't get triggered when we ask hard questions. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? He doesn't get like, God's not nervous and he's not scared. And so we can lean on God a little bit and really go, well, how does this work? Not to doubt him, but to right. really understand. And I think people get confused whenever they hear about what we teach and stuff and they think we're trying to minimize Yeshua or minimize you know what he did and it's not that at all it's that Yeshua's life his death his resurrection is so important that I want to really understand right. what what it's all about if it's really like we always have said if it's really everything to us if it's really the most important thing in, in our lives shouldn't we really want to understand what it's all about so Anyway, long answer to that, out of ashes is really just 
out of people's brokenness through the scripture, through the spirit and, and through worship of the king. We come together in in uh, in balance and maturity and healing so that we can further the kingdom of God and push out the borders of the kingdom, which is what we're called to do. So being a, a leader, a teacher, you've always, as long as I've known you, uh, you've always been teaching the word and uh, trying to help people understand it. Um, why do you feel that need to reach out to people? Is, why don't you take that personal journey? But you, you, you take on the responsibility of being a teacher. And as you know, the scriptures say, the, uh, the responsibility is much heavier on the teacher than it is a receiver. Yeah, indeed. Um, I mean, I make no bones about it. I don't want to be a teacher. Um, <laughs> okay. I don't want to be a pastor. I don't, I mean, it's just, you know, and, right. uh, and the father and I have this discussion pretty regularly. Um, and he seems to always win, but um, <laughs> by nature, I would, I would like to live on our farm. I would like to not ever have to deal with anybody, and and just my family and I, and you know, and sometimes you know, be isolated from them. You know, <laughs> you know. no, I, I love my family, of course, right. but you know, just um, just be me and just do me and not worry about anybody else. That's my nature, who who I would like to be. Um, and I've, I've tried doing that over and over in my life. I've tried to seclude myself and, and really try, and we've called it running from God. Or I've tried to really seclude myself. But it seems like um, there's always this thing that pulls me. You know, of course, it's, it's God. It's the Ruach, the Spirit, that always pulls me back. But um, I don't say this with any kind of like haughtiness or, or arrogance or anything like that. But for some reason... God has given me some insight on Scripture and and how to look at Scripture, and I don't, I don't know why He's done that or or you know whatever, but it it helps people, and um, and you know I say on one hand that I don't I don't want to be a teacher or a pastor, but on the other hand, um, my world is never at peace really like it is when I am sharing, and I don't mean just from behind a pulpit, but I mean like this or just on a one-on-one -on -one conversation or in a small group or sitting around a table eating together and talking about the things of God, life is never as good really as it is at that point. You know, so there's there's us that wants to do what we feel like we want to do, um, but then there's also the call of God and what he wants to do. And um, if, you know, in my opinion, if we really believe that God's word is all that we have said it is, and I, I do believe that, then it is the cure for what ails people. You know, that Yeshua is the healer. He, you know, God is the healer. Um, he's the deliverer. And, and uh, I've tried working vocational jobs. I, you know, I've done all, I've done everything from flipping hamburgers to, you know, marketing and, and business um, and owning my own businesses and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it always comes back to this. This is the only thing that will last. And so that's, uh, I mean, it's my passion. You know, it's, it's where I am.